Minerva Rising comes out in just about a week. If you're watching this when it comes out, which you should. I've come from the future to give you guys a brief rundown of all the new hotness that's come down in SETI. If you want to hear more detailed rundown about any of these deck profiles that we're talking about today, make sure you comment down below. And maybe consider subscribing while you're down there. Starting things off, one main draw of the set is supporting the five glittery decks that were first introduced back in set 5. A bunch of original lore units that basically have cross nation cards seeking out the fire regalis. They haven't found it yet, but they did find a piece of this generic order card that basically counts as a persona ride, so that's pretty cool. Anyways, let's talk about these fancy cards. Roa is traditionally a very defensive deck, thanks to this ability to just spam tokens and never really need to play a board besides Redalina. Now, we got another ready, and she unlocks a 5 attack turn with the ability to be called mid battle by eating her grade 2 counterpart. Also, Rero's an idol, I guess? Chaos is chaos, and always will be, but things are a little bit more consistent with Grade 1 Makani counting as up to 4 different cards in Soul, and calling the Grade 3 out of Soul. Also, the order helps by recycling cards in your drop zone back right into Soul. Deck's still basically random gotcha though, so chaos is chaos. And speaking of orders, White Red Will Be got one that looks for Soda Ride right away, so that's fun. Also, a Grey Will Maple that's Maple's Broken Effect again, and another that helps Sagria. But let's be real here, we're just buying her out for the free superior call whenever you ride Sokeo or Kefir. Everyone's favorite Link Joker girl gets a new dad in the set that basically lets you attack the full front row. Those of you guys that I played a million back in the day may know this effect, but basically you either bait out intercepts before you attack the vanguard, or when the vanguard swings you just wipe out the full front row for no reason. Hidden Order basically copies Ava's main skill of checking top X to get a thing, but this time you just look at top 5 to call a card, so that's basically fair. Finally, for the one I care about, Hemiur gets some new dolls to play with. Well, grade 1 versions of the old one, but... New Rara and New Riri are basically just free units that come out to support the Grade 2 units and do all sorts of little soul combos, just like a good Nightmare Doll deck should. And the order? Basically makes Soul Bass cost for it free if played correctly. Anyways, speaking of stealth decks, let's get into those new red lines. If Tamayura tried to be Shiryuki with Nightmare Dolls, Shoji Doji is trying to be more of a classic Narukami, Murakumo, Ninja, Binding, both sides of the board. With one effect, he temporarily clears up opponent's graveyards before bouncing right back to the hand at the end of turn. Just like the old days with Murakumo. With his other, we get multi-attack by calling through some Bizo, just like... Dean... Maidens. Okay, first the Fox Girl steals all my Nightmare Dolls, now Gear Crockle? It's bad enough that Vyrena is right Chrono Jet. Of course, Shoji is a card that focuses on stealth units, so make sure to pick up stuff like Forktail and Silent Crow for some synergy. Or, you know, just buy out the entirety of Murku and Utama from Premium. Here comes my girl. Arcade is Ava's little science buddy, but this time she doesn't just care about protecting Opsky Dad. No, 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 no. Arcade? She's all about making her monsters grow. Between her order and Archite skills, you can continuously cycle monster cards in and out of the deck while getting a strong 4 attack turn. I don't want to say this is an underrated deck of the set, just because it's the one I'm going to be picking up, but Space Akanisha and Joe is potentially insane! For this one, I'm like honestly just pick up anything with monster in its name. Fun note, Mystery grounded a bunch of old cards to say at monster now, including the Tridec Perfect card. Finally, for the new kids, there's a card. Not a full ride line, but if anyone played Deer Days, you may remember Grand Race. You know, Kedra Magnolia with the ability to attack four times from the back row and then just do a bunch of soul drawing things and stuff. Yeah, he's here. He's good. Good Kedra stuff is a very fun deck to play, so just pick up a bunch of Kedra staples if you want to play Graham Crack the Dragon. And finally, oh uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's three encounters a set. Remember when Bushwood said they'd be a special, like, once a year thing? Yeah, I'll do a video on that soon. But for now, here's a Circus Girl. Honestly, I never really cared about Luke Ye. I mean, I've always been more of a Harry and Nightmare Doll guy. My favorite Dragon Tamer's back, and this time she only gets multi-attack with her order. Unfortunate, but at least she's good at making really big swings and can super consistently cycle out her Silver Thorns, so that's good. Speaking of waifus, Minerva's back! This time she combines a variant of her original Reseant skill with the Scry ability to remind us that Genesis is basically the evolution of OTT. 
All of her Rugali pieces basically give you an insane combo attack turn, but it is very wombo combo heavy to land more than a few extra swings per turn. Oh yeah, and Maelstrom's back. Don't forget to pick up your two dragons at the door! You know, like, Inlet Pulse? Yeah, he supports another deck. Good thing Bushy announced reprints coming out in a few more sets. And that's all. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure to leave a thumbs up. And always embrace the infinite. Bye-bye.